in progress. Uh, hi, I'm Malika Albrecht, and I'm the founding editor of uh, Redheaded Stepchild, and this is our Thursday book launch. Um, I am excited. We've had a fabulous conversation prior to recording. I'm sorry y'all missed it, but fortunately for you, um, Zoe's actual reading will be recorded, and we'll have some conversation asking about process and kind of what sparks your fire, Zoe. Um, I do want to give a couple of little details biographically, and I also want to point out in the chat section, I have a direct link so that you could order uh, Bird Body from Cordella Press. I heard there's only five left, five or six. Um, if you want to wisely go to Zoe's website, that also is in the chat section. Um, hopefully this book will go into a second press uh, publication. Uh, Zoe Faye sent stint. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Stent. Stent, yeah, it's a tongue twister. Yeah, I hit the T and then I was like, ah. Um, <laughs> is a queer bicontinental poet with roots in both the French and American South. We've been talking a lot about history and where we're from. Their work has been nominated for the Pushcart Prize, featured or forthcoming in places such as Southern Humanities, um, Ninth Letter and Poet Lore and now is gathered into a chapbook, which was the winner of the inaugural Gwendolyn Brooks Poetry Prize. The title of the book is Bird Body. She is currently in um, Ames, Iowa, and they are a MFA candidate who will be graduating in May um, and is also a community farm volunteer. And uh, the their thesis is some different writing, so we, we might even be able to ask some questions about that. I'm heading to you, spotlighting you, and thank you so much for letting us, um, you know, have this uh, celebration with you of Bird Body. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I Yeah, we, we were talking a bit um, in the pre-recording time about how Kai Coggin uh, connected us and just how, how deeply linked a lot of folks in this uh, in this reading space are linked with Kai and Wednesday night poetry and um, I can tell why I can I can feel the the warmth of this space is the same as the Wednesday night poetry warmth you know um, just deeply deeply committed and loving folks who show up for each other so I feel it I love it um yeah, so I'm going to read from Bird Body, um, my debut chat book. I have a loner computer right now and my um, my camera's not very good, but hopefully you can see it with all my little um, my little post-its for where I'm going to read. Um, so Bird Body, just to give you uh, a quick introduction to the work is a um, my debut chapbook, and it's um, kind of a coming of age narrative. It, it thinks through um, what it means to be, you know, a, a girlish, a girl adjacent uh, body coming into the world and having, um, yeah, reckoning with with the world and the ways that it it greets um, that it greets the speaker in kind, beautiful, delightful ways, and also often in in hard, um, sometimes violent ways, and so. A lot of bird body is thinking about um, wrestling with violence in that way, especially centered around um, recovering from sexual assault and kind of what that long term recovery process looks like, um, but also just in general kind of how to have a body in the world. Um, and yeah, and it's called bird body because it, it thinks through these things through and with um, birds and in communion both kind of real and surreal with those birds. Um, I grew up, as we mentioned, on the on the Tar River um, in Blunts Creek, North Carolina, and so, uh, and was an only child. And so, um, yeah, birds were my pals when I had few, few and far between, you know, the, the, the birds showed up and um, yeah, especially the heron. Um, and they really helped to raise me in a lot of ways, so. I will start with the opening poem from the collection, which um, is named Our, Our Heron. Mornings, she doctors me with that gray beak, picks out the growing lumps from my breast's hot pulp and tosses them in the river. Minnows feast. She fills in the dents around my nipple, nudges the plastic curve of my skyla, settles its thin bones, so it sits right, 
my uterus still womb empty. She's done this already. Mom's cancer dug out, the cracks in her vertebrae filled with Tar River water and mud, a cob to build her strong again. When the sun goes, the heron cuts through rising fog, spears herself a sunfish. She bring, brings back a banquet. She brings back a banquet, lays out clams and blue crab for us. She piles driftwood, lights a fire. We wet our fingers in the meat. Thank you, Malika. Um, the heron is a big character in this book. I um I got this uh I got this tattoo <laughs> with, with the heron um and some some North Carolina flora and uh, Southern France flora as well. And I got I had been thinking about this tattoo for um, over a decade. My my dad designed it and um and. I got it maybe two weeks before the bird body got uh, accepted. And my friend was like, you have a bird body now, you have a bird on your body. And that kind of like summoned the book into the world. So yeah, synchronicity for sure. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of bird body is about, as I mentioned, recovering from trauma um, and thinking about the ways that you know, recovery can be troubled and thinking about the ways that healing can be troubled and um, isn't linear and doesn't always have an arrival point or a point at which you fully recover, right? Um, the work that I'm trying to do in Bird Body is to think through those spaces where trauma bubbles up at unexpected moments and continues to live in the body. Um, and this is a poem that wrestles with that. This is called, after emailing your mom, another poem about it. She says she's surprised it still haunts you, brushing the needles from your hair. Says, I'm hard and wish to hell I weren't. You wonder what to write back, how to explain the hostage your nervous system has trained, how the trauma lives quietly for months, careful not to tip anything over inside you until you find yourself on a date in your own car, a man's arms wrapped around you in fervor and you have gone slack, silver grass, limp with first frost, your voice blued in its tunnel. You're sure you were in control, but your body now bowed into a ball in the driver's seat didn't get the signal. Everyone wants you to stop writing about it, this unkillable thing, enough, enough. You have been loved. Yes, you are fortunate. Don't harden yourself, baby, your mom writes back. She pulls the splinters from your teeth. Stay open. Thank you. I love the, the Zoom video uh, claps. I appreciate you guys. I'm gonna read another heron poem. Um, the heron kind of appears in periodic moments, kind of helping me untangle these moments. And also I would say kind of haunting me along the way too. Um, yeah, this is called Her Beak Inside Me. And it's more, it's one of the more um, surrealist poems in which again, I'm thinking kind of of the heron helping me heal in, in some magical surrealism ways. Definitely my spirit animal. Her beak inside me. While the heron works on me, I sleep, dreaming of a small fire struck in my gut, a coiled army of ants caught in some dark recess of my throat. She takes every bone out to boil, drying them on the bank. I worry she'll mistake a bent piece of driftwood for my clavicle, subbing in a crab's abandoned shell where the parietal bone should fit. Others gather while she works. Red squirrels pick at felled pecans. The street beagles pant uneasily. 
My mother's in the house washing pots over and over, something she can't rub clean sticking to their sides. A sparrow has just flown into his reflection, now stumbling nauseously around our rotting porch. In that, in that house as old as us, things are splintering. Mom flicks tree frogs off the window screen, a frog for each fracture, her brother's ailing body, her father's sickness roiling inside her, each lost friend clicking offline flick, flick, flick underneath the window, the dog collects their bodies from the grass, drops them from his gentle maw onto the bed of magnolia sheddings, those wide glossy leaves, the wilted petals, their tough seeds. Each pale belly still thumping, greens starting to dull. I wait for the shore to reappear, for the tide to go out, for the heron to pull her long mouth out. When she's finished, she'll sew me up with willow thread, send me to the water. I'll pull the clams up by their knife tops, try to boil them clean. The water cloudy with river mud, stinking of swamp. Um, that, that was a poem I hadn't read out loud in a while. And it's interesting to think about um, this work and all of its in all of its phases that it's lived inside me and now thinking of it entering the world in this new way as well. Um, I wrote this, I wrote a lot of the poems in here um, when I first experienced um, assault when I was 18 and 19. And so these poems, you know, I'm, I'm 29 now. And so they've really been <laughs> marinating and um, shifting and, you know, none of them are in their original form, but um, but it's it's definitely interesting to see um, how the 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 woman who wrote these poems ten years ago has shifted in these pages and and in me too. Um, and I think the reason that bird body is so drenched in the surreal and is so anchored in that in that kind of limbo space of not not sure what what is real and what isn't um, is from recovering from trauma, right? I think often. Um, it's helpful to write through traumatic events in these kind of surreal spaces so that we can get close to it and back away and get close to it and back away and kind of wrestle, wrestle with it in that way by orbiting it and not necessarily um, getting too close to it um, because, of, because of how tricky that is. Um, I, I see Karen nodding and smiling, so I hope that resonates a bit. Um, so, and as you may have noticed, um, one of the other stars in this book is, is my mom, um, who, you know, also was a big part in um, the recovery process and also just my companion um, as she showed me the world. And so a lot of the work in Bird Body is about co-violence, co co-hurting, co-difficulties, um, and also co-healing. And so... I'm going to shift into some co-healing poems. Uh, and this one is a shout out also to Texas right now, uh, finally entering into some, some cool weather. I lived in Austin for many years and they're finally getting fall. So this is that joyous moment when the, the 100 degree weather finally stops. August. Impossibly, we wake to 70 degrees and the air moving, a loophole, a mistake in the pattern. Everyone breaks out, porches fill, rosé, hey, the beetles start their cha-cha. And here you are, black dress, purple scrunchy, middle of a Sunday afternoon. Under my palm, your arm is the softest thing I've ever felt, decades worth of freckles collecting. We curl and press into each other, two willow tendrils, daughter, mother. You are learning how to let your grief splay out. I'm learning how to help you unfold it. Let it not grow shame in spots without absorbing it into my own body. 
schist pillar, cicada shedding again and again on a hundred solitary trees. No one holds you in your weakness anymore, rubs an endless circle into your back. In my bed, your life cracks through its bald exterior, starts rising. Thank you. Um, I think I'll read one more from Bird Body and then I have a couple newer pieces. Malika, how am I doing on time? You are doing fabulous. I want you to keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, this is one of the last uh, poems in the collection and um, it's about joyfully rejoining, retrusting the world. Sharing the table. Stranger, I'd like to put my head in your lap. I don't often write like this, exclaiming, proclaiming, full of happy little pies. Our table neighbors wave down their friends with bright, sweaty faces. Yes, ours. We've protected each other's computers, our loose change and tacos, and now we've built this small little land here under the oaks with our salsa warming the flies' bellies. You keep the grackles out of my watery cold brew. What love. I let my floral top slink off my shoulders. Let the sun who has already burned me warm my skin like I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. I'll stretch out my long two pale legs and let them sprawl along the skinny picnic table planks. Let my face get pink. Let the live oak drop her molting all over me. I watch a bird beyond the fence tear into the little garden snake he's caught, limp curl in his mouth. You turn, pick a leaf out of my tangled hair. See, you're already taking care of me. Let me lean into you like the roads bend, trusting its body. Let it be a hot head of hair warming your thigh, a strange and surprising love, unkempt like the napkins flying in the wind and nobody running after them. Let nobody run after them. Just this once, let them press themselves into the tree bark, begging, ruining themselves in the light. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna pull up. Um, some newer poems and blind myself on this bright computer screen joyfully. Um, okay. So I'm definitely going to be one of those poets that um, keeps going into my, like goes into bookshops and finds my book and like furiously makes edits in the margins and just marks up the book because everything's different now and I'm revising all of the poems forever. Um, and I think that, I think that poems, you know, books are never done. We, we keep circling similar things often and they, they keep popping up in new ways. Um, and so this is a newer poem, but has some similar echoes. And I wrote this um, after the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Um, and so this is poem that tries to reckon with that moment. I'll have some water. This was also um, at the end of spring semester. It was quite a long year. And I had like 50, 50 assignments still to grade and just ran, ran for the hills, which living in Iowa means I ran for Wisconsin. <laughs> This is called Poem, I Am Tired. I want to forget again about having a body. My friend cries in the HEB parking lot. My friend teaches the 19 year old on the phone with the insurance company what an IUD is. IUV, he asks. My body is a cold and rumbling fault line. Everyone with uteruses, come take a walk with me. Pelicans gathering on the Mississippi's horizon like white tumors. The stink from all this rot, all these old lives turning over. 
after the news, within the news, I sleep alone in an unlockable Airbnb in the middle of a Wisconsin wood. No one comes for me. No one gets me pregnant. I hear the wolves too far south this year making a plan. I was given no logistics. I was given a body, sort of. I was set loose in a world with many hands, many pens, many locking devices in all the wrong paces, places. Poem, you are getting unmanageable. In the night, when I am near bursting and finally gather my fear up enough to let my bladder free, I brave the night and its toothiest demands. I huff and howl, stomp on the porch planks, let my body be known. I make a big show. I make a loud mess of this living. I make myself unmissable, demanding. Nobody runs away. <laughs> I keep popping back to the Zoom screen to look at your faces and it's lovely. Thank you. Um, okay, I think I'll read two more poems. Uh, I think that I think that's what I got. Um, and we're gonna continue the Wisconsin theme. Um, I'm really glad I escaped from the semester and went and and booked this, uh, you know. Airbnb that I definitely didn't have money for, but I just had to go. Um, and a lot of poems fell out of that weekend. So um, this poem, this, this book, Bird Body, is uh, dedicated to my younger self, I think, because, um, because of the gap in time wrestling with these poems and working through this experience. Um, I wanted to kind of recognize that that time and that gap and also recognize that self that I was when I wrote them and kind of, um, yeah, make some space for my, my younger selves uh, in their various stages. Um, and I'm still doing some of that writing towards my younger self. Um, so this poem reflects that. Little me, in Wisconsin, everyone waves to each other. The stray cat in front of the co-op has gotten more love in the last 20 minutes than anyone can hope for in a year. Someone's just stooped their ancient body down to meet her with their rough hands behind her welcome ear. Another has emptied a yogurt container to fill with water for her to lap up. There is always someone waiting to shower you, little one. In the driftless, every valley dodged the glacier's flattening heft, and now a farm cat swats at the blackbird swooping down to greet it. We're never out of the woods. More woods, more wolves howling as you try to brave the outhouse. In the morning, all those trees remind you of their fellowship, eyes upon eyes of birches. I'm alone, said nobody ever without lying. I know you're spooked, little me. I'll hold you with my two warmest hands. I'll take you to the blood root. Imagine how its broken stem would light our finger pads orange, and then I'll let it be. Someone who stayed in this cabin before us got themselves a deer, and from the wood line, her ribs poke up like many white fingers. I'm not saying it's all right. I'm not saying everything or forever. I'm taking you to the Kickapoo River, a hundred watery curves, a hundred hiding spots. Press your hips into hers, dozens of wood anemones nodding back to you. Put your feet in the goop. Watch the fly busy your belly hair. I'll watch the dried, I'll wash the dried mud from your toes this evening on the back steps. Blue dawn suds between every little piggy. Take a load off, little me. Like the black cat at the store's mechanical mouth. Stretch your neck out. Let the love come. Thank you. Okay. 
And last one, let the love come. I love that echo in the chat. One last one, and as you can probably tell, I've um, shifted the tone into some healing spaces, right? Because um, because both both are true, right? The the hurt, the violence, the hardship, and and the healing. Um, and this next one is a poem for spring, for rebirth, for um, hope, even in the exhaustion, um, and for finding some some kind of stamina, some kind of ability to keep, keep pushing through. Not this time. Hallelujah. Windows open, trash men bullying those plastic cans for more plastic and waving to me on my slipper perch. Hallelujah, violet, blue jay, chipmunk, all tyrants against death. I don't care that there are a dozen million spring poems. Here, reader, another. Let us rejoice and revel and burn with that good sun on our skin, and then let's do it again. This morning, I snuck behind the neighbors to lay my body under the forsythia because childhood, because long winter, because I have no church, only this. Hey there, Delilah, crooning from a car stereo between the house gaps, a sermon, noonday trap a promise always going going on the footpath tell me where did you hide the guilt scale today useless waste of good irons forever fiddling with the sooth dials let me remind you that things can always get worse misery often leads to bigger misery and we will forever pull out the rust wrench and crawl under the beast's leaking greasy belly to polish those aching bones to yank the rotted and the splintered there is more to do eternally more to do forever always i know you're tired before you go, let your feet soak up the cement's wet chill with me for a moment that will likely contract every bad sickness because our neighbors are out here cheering on their daffodils because the dog has been lapping the yard on his lead and like him, we are certain to find the end of our rope sometimes and be yanked back ruthless, but not today, sunshine, not this time. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Holy smokes. If y'all want to unmute, please do. Put us back to gallery. Mm. Yeah, not today. <laughs> I kind of want to see all those poems like right now in front of me. I just feel so strongly about so much of that. Oh, thank you. My book is. Thank you. What would you say, Regina? My book. My book, I bought um, my, her book is in my cart. <laughs> right, right. I mean, like, I, I'm trying to make sure we, you know, we, we, there's only five left uh, at there. Um, I'm so glad to see Karen and Laura together, y'all. I'm kind of jealous. Right. That's so awesome. We you you should one. be jealous. We, I hate I that am. we missed the first part of the reading. We were, um, forgot that it was on. At we six. forgot it was on at six, and I was opening well, birthday presents and drinking champagne. Hells yes. And it's, my, we should my, sing happy birthday at some point. Um, and, and that, you know, the six o'clock is my error. But, um, I, you know, I was trying to write down all the lines that resonated. And I mean, th there's just too many of them. Oh, and and uh, right. you'll get to see in the chat section. I'll send that to you, Zoe, because I think it's interesting to see when the whole thing lights up with three or four people saying this line, the exact okay. same one. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I can't I, wait to see the recording. Laura and I are just like punching each other. We're like, how did we miss the start of this? Because oh. I, I know, but you know, I, I, I really, Zoe, I just am in awe of the layers of the work that you write. And, and I also have to say your reading is like flawless. I really enjoy yeah. the pace of it. And um, there's something uh, that just is really hard not to just get caught in it and, and just marvel at what you're creating and, and what you're saying and the truths that you're speaking. And that 
you know, it, it does contain all of that, you know, it does contain the heart, the heart, you know, the hardship and also the healing and a fabulous job. And I loved, it was, it was as a, as a mom, um, hearing your poem about the mom really hit me hard. Like I thought, Oh God, I'm going to have to go ahead and take that camera off. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so much. That really means Do people have questions about Zoe's process. Um, I, I always want to ask about the color the cover, you know, how did the cover get chosen and, you know, who did that? Yeah. So this is Chris Clother. Um, he's the, so Kate, Kate Clother is the, the editor of Cordella Press who published the book and her husband, Chris is a, an illustrator. And so he did the, this illustration. Um, yeah. And I, and we went through a couple different, um, a couple different image, you know, possibilities. Um, and I gotta say, Cordella, Kate at Cordella just did an incredible job laying out the book and just being really full of care with every decision that went into it. Um, and I feel really grateful. There's a little, um, he also did this little feather, feather. Uh, on the like inside. This. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, they came up with several different images and I liked, I liked this one because, um, you know, there, there is a lot of her, there is one poem that I actually didn't read tonight. Um, but I think I read on, uh, Kai, uh, Wednesday night poetry at, at one point, um, about finding, finding and kind of laying to rest, uh, um, a bird and, um, and so this was kind of born from that poem, but I like that it, that it, thinks about there's a theme in the book of creating soft soft places to land and so it really creates that feeling and the cover right of like making space to feel the hurt to feel all of these these hard truths and also having tenderness in that too yes and I, I think um you know the the one poem you wrote to younger me you know um echoes that theme I mean I, I can see where threads connect and and also have changes um as you you know as you move through as a poet um that was fabulous and there was that just made me think of another question oh your tattoo you said your dad illustrated so he's obviously an artist as well that's what I wanted to come back to yes yeah I had no I had no choice my mom is a poet my mom is an incredible poet and my dad is an artist so I really just um I had no choice. <laughs> I was going to say, and you were an only child, so. Yep. I had yeah. to find a way to combine all of those. <laughs> steeped in it. Steeped in it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So anybody have any questions that you wanted to ask? You could tell you're a meticulous editor. You can. Oh, thank you for saying that. That really means a lot. It's sometimes a skill and sometimes, uh, yeah. And I just want to say, I mean, you can. Oh, John, I go ahead, John. Say, sorry, you can't see my face. I'm not in my bedroom, and my house is a mess. So, <laughs> but I just want to tell Zoe, is it Zoe, right? Mm -hmm. I added you on Facebook. Uh, my name's John Compton. It's me, except me. John, <laughs> <laughs> <Done>. okay. <Alrighty. laughs> and I loved your poems. You're wonderful and amazing and spectacular. And um, I'm glad, I'm glad y'all started a little late because I thought it was at seven also. And it said happening I now. Know. And I was like, no, no, it can't be happening now. <laughs> so I'm so glad you're yeah, here. I tried to get the word out. Yeah, glad <laughs> you're here, John. And and so Zoe was kind enough to allow us to start, you know, a little bit late uh, because of, of my error. This has not been a good computer week for me, we will say. Don't even, um, the timing is always perfect no matter what happens. So whoever's in this room right now needs to be in this room. I'll trust that completely. Yeah. Um, yeah I kind of want to hear more, but then I also want to say, I forgot to announce open mic. So, you know, what we'll do is just send me a quick uh, message on the chats. And so I will have your name down for open mic. Um, and that's weird. Nobody's sending me a message. Oh, I, yeah, no, it's a no. Ron, you will do it. Yes. Okay. Under my new name. Uh, Ron, oh, and Regina will too. Ronzoid, <laughs> the wonder dog. 
I can say that. I'm seeing Ron, Regina, and John. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see John. Okay. Thank you. God. Thank you, Zoe. I, I told I you. Am it's my fault. I'm not seeing goodness, Malika. I no. know. No, I <laughs> really would definitely not want anybody to walk away not feeling seen. Gosh, knows that would be the horror of uh, what our intent is here. But I have definitely, I like, I am definitely like, holy smokes. Yeah, I could, um, Don, I can screen share. Um, if you have, you know, poems that you maybe are acrostic, um, what I'll have to do is make you a uh, co-host. And so I'm doing that. Um, and I'm always open to that. And, and also a reminder, if you did want me to uh, pause the recording, I'd be happy to do that. If it's a poem that you would like to keep private for whatever reasons, just send me a message and I will quietly pause. Um, no worries there. I so, have a question for jo Zoe. Good, jump uh, in. Um, so I'm always interested in uh, in any poet or or a fiction writer uh, the the relative importance of sound versus the meaning in the edits, especially in the, in the revision stages of things when you're really shaping it. Uh, so I was wondering if you could speak to that. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think I I think um, usually like the way the way I write is I write free write so I I just write through the thing and just like a big block of text and then I shape from there and I think that has the effect of because I write in that way it means that my form isn't always super creative because I have to kind of like shape it from there um, but I think that that has like a lot of the natural rhythms that that we as humans you know have in our brains at all times and in our bodies and so um from there, I'll try to revise with that rhythm in mind as much as I can. And, and I think the, the biggest thing that helps me think about that is, um, is reading it out loud in the, in the final stages of the editing process too. And, and you can kind of tell, you know, I can always tell when I've like edited, stripped the energy from a piece too much and right. edited it too much, but, um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't think of um, music and meaning. I think of them as as playing together, right? And building off of each other. I think that's a great question. Yeah. It is awesome to hear people's process and you know um, what works for the initial and then what works for the editing stages. I, I think the thing that struck me the most was the the natural rhythm in the in the reading and in in the work. I mean that, you know, um is, is a powerful effect with the layers of meaning and how you know the heron and, and some of the other images become you know almost iconic or like regina said like a spirit animal that has a lot of different roles to play mm -hmm. thank you uh, so much uh, to me it was just uh, yeah i'm actually speechless and the people that have been with me for a while are like what the hell happened i'm done i just I got to say, it really, it really is just such a joy, you know, not all Zoom rooms are created equally. And so it really is such a joy to, to hear, to get feedback from all of y'all and just to, to have you in the space because, um, yeah, you create a really warm space and it's also, you know, you never know how your poems are going to land. And so thank you for greeting them so kindly. Uh, there would, I wish, you know, I wish we had had this book. Um, I was a rape crisis counselor and did poetry therapy for survivors. And I wish we had had something like this. I wish that um, somebody had hit so much of, of that. Yeah, that, thank you. Thank you for saying that. That's been, um, I've been kind of trying to think of how to bring bird body into. Um, oh, I'm thinking of my role as, as someone who is, who is healing ish but I, I wonder if I can step into that with more responsibility. Okay, if you are interested, um, so uh, does everybody remember Carrie Dodd's uh, edited book, Grabbed? Grabbed, the anthology Grabbed. We did a book launch for them. I reached out to my old group, La Fossa, which is Louisiana Foundation Against Sexual Assault, and they did it as their book club. I would love to introduce you if, you're, if you would be open to that. 
absolutely um, to, for the book to get distributed maybe in the, you know in a, or heard in in that kind of audience where it would be so powerful I would love that. That would be incredible. Okay. I will definitely connect you. Yeah. With you also. I am. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm a grad student at Iowa state uh, university right now for my MFA and I was invited into a, an undergrad class to, to read a few of these poems. And that was by far, you know, one of my best, uh, my most moving and meaningful experiences with bird body, because, you know, the, date rape and sexual assault are just so so prevalent on college campuses and we get emails about this almost you know almost weekly about crime reports on campus for sexual assault and so talking with other 18 19 20 year olds who are learning to put language to this because bird body was my process of understanding what had happened to me because I didn't know what had happened to me was a violence you know um, and I think that's, that's a real, yeah, that really says something about our society. And so using this as, again, a soft place to land, a kind of space where folks can start to put language to that experience and recover in their own way and wrangle with it in their own way is really what I'm hoping to do with this book. Yeah. I love it. And I would definitely love to see that in, you know, for La Fossa. And, and like I said, these are, you, and I think you just hit on something that was palpable in a lot of the poems that you read and in the reading, th there is this soft landing somewhere. I, and I don't know how to explain it. Did other people kind of feel like there was, even though this was really hard stuff and it's talking directly about like, um, you know, the, the hard and the hurt and that, you know, the devastation, but there was, there was something soft and hopeful even still. And, and I don't know how you did that. Hmm. I don't have a word for it, but I, I love it because I, I think that's almost, it is very hard to do. And, and I don't know anybody that, and I have a lot of books on the poets that have written about this topic and, and a lot of poems that I deeply admire, but there's something in the element of what you did with Bird Body that um, I don't know how, I just really deeply admire it. Wow. That means so much to me. Thank you. Um, ah. All right, guys, let's uh, move to open mic and I will reach out to you with all that stuff, Zoe, so we can get that done. John, I'm going to come to you first. Um, here you go. All righty. Well, hello. And unfortunately, my face will go away because I only have a phone right now. And so when I move away from Zoom, it goes blank. But I'm going to read a poem about my mother, um, which is, is different than, well, anyhow, it's called My Morning Mother. My mother slept aversely, though through the night her face unfolded, it smoothed over. Her lips were pink earthworms. Her tongue became sober, a softened sword. In bed, she was a cocoon half exposed. And that's that poem. Oh, John, <laughs> I adore how you do that. Um, <laughs> and that's that poem, a softened sword, holy smoke. I mean, just <laughs> wow, John. That's a very different poem for you. Yes, it's a it's it's a poem about my mother. Years ago, she's been sober for like fifteen years or so, fourteen, something like that. But um, but yeah, so she was an alcoholic there for a bit, and then you know, in the morning time, she'd be sober for a moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> really powerful i like the images that you used it was really beautiful well thank you and a softened sword is going to stick with me for a while um regina i'm coming to you thank you john good evening everybody <clears throat> can you hear me you can hear me. yes you're perfect okay so the poem i'm going to read is actually one that's going to come out tomorrow in the auto ethnographer um, and, and actually the submission, they took the entire submission. So there's like a, a micro essay and three poems and it all focuses on um, uh, bodily autonomy. Okay. So the one that I'm, I'm choosing to read this evening, I hope I haven't read it here before, but maybe I have, act like you haven't heard it. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Myth as Ladder Life. Myth as Ladder Life. Pandora Revisited. 
Box flung wide, out crawls the solid form of what has been living as essence, as whisper, as rumor, as silent talk in corners. It puts on clothing garish red, calls it blood of Jesus, and paints it across the annals of a familiar menacing history that births again and again. And it boldly announces an extra coming. We watch, wince, feel the latter day mist shards descend as we silently, erroneously, patiently, dangerously wait for it to dissipate, that we might welcome our solemn reign of reason back again, again. But fleshed out fear and rage is not easily contained, remains uncaptured, positions while it can, destroys what it will. Even when a gentler face emerges, it becomes clear. The lid is lost. Our strategy must change. Now calling for sun spells that will evaporate this ever slicing shower of despair. Oh, Regina, just powerful. The lid is lost. I mean, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. As always, open mic, y'all bringing it. Um, Ron, I'll come to you and then Don, I'll be with you and you do have uh, the ability to share your screen. There you go, Ron. Okay, I, I, I may have read this one before here also, but I'm not sure. Uh, it was inspired by uh, a oh, wow. a, something I found on the beach, which was just, uh, uh, you know, looked really sensuous. At times it looks like a bird, At times it looks like the curvature of a leg, uh, you know, and, and things like that. And it reminded me of a certain type of whelk shell. Some whelks are like straight cylindrical up and down and some uh, very curved, also like leg shape, a full leg shape from, from the thigh down to the ankle in a very kind of a, a sensual kind of feel to it. So this uh, poem is called uh, Whelk. If I can find it here underneath everything. Whelk. <clears throat> Deep. In the rattling riptide, the hurly burly beachhead, the caterwauling cauldron, as turbulent as time, the whelk hull washes shoreward through the shell scrubbing spume, the frothy latte of living things, and lulls at last in the saving sand and breeze. The sun denudes her lacy leg sleeks her calci crust, warms her curvy flank and foreleg. And there you sit, shell at your foot, the gastropod the gods have sent you for your troubles. A 20 year turbulence, a torment of marriage, where undertow heaved daily. You stroke the whelk's thigh, calf, neat turn of ankle, smooth as lambskin now, and it's coming clear to you. Some things lose their sex appeal with age, others just getting started. Thank you. Oh, fabulous. Uh, the language is wonderful too. Others are just getting started. I, hope, I forgot to remind people, please check the chat section because it's very active uh, with after you read. Um, Ron, I'm coming to you. Let's see. There we go. Thanks, Malika. And thank you, Zoe. It was a, it was, it's really good work and really well read and so much hope in it so much hope in the voice of your work. I think that's what Malaika was trying to get at. And um, a lot of work ab about trauma doesn't really have that. On October 19, 2022, two days before his 19th birthday, Sam Westmoreland, 
a freshman lineman at the Mississippi State University football team, texted love to his mother and sister, drove to the Blackjack Missionary Baptist Church and committed suicide. Sparrow Generations. Brown offered a full ride on my tennis, MIT on academics. Even then I knew I want to learn in college. I have a choice. Chris Dolman, Tony Dorsett, Dan Marino, the lucky athletes who soared to glory. Their generations passed through Pitt Stadium right outside my office window. I marveled as the Coliseum was demolished and one early morning at the end when no one else was looking, the facade with the entrance gate fell, the last grand relic to come down, broke the street and the sewer beneath, and I finally understood that choice I made at 16. Now it's an event center, the peat, glass and concrete, food mall and Wi-Fi, Judas Priest and basketball, Foo Fighters, hockey, Disney on ice. Sometimes I ride up the escalator. Mostly I walk outdoors through the hedges, alive with birds, feral cats, and groundhogs. Either way, you can't miss that vaulted interior, limitless ceiling, video wall like the side of a house, sports news constantly running, pictures of trophied athletes displayed in locked cases like numbered Audubon prints or rare baseball cards. In the morning, I pass by the gym. Even at six, there are students on the treadmills, boys fit and massive, beautiful, girls fit and beautiful too. I see them on campus with their teammates, lounging and laughing, bruised and braced, casts and crutches. Often a bird strikes the peat windows in flight, then lies still on the concrete till the janitor comes. Sometimes I carry one back to the hedges when it's been days. Last week I saw a sparrow by the glass wall standing on the concrete like a statue, even when I knelt beside it. I touched his belly, urged him, step up. He hopped over my finger, then turned and flew onto my hand. The life and quickness in that tiny body, the bright trust of a stranger. I slowly stood and walked him up to the hedges, urged him once more, and he flew free on to his own life. That's Sparrow Generations. Thank you so much, Don. Wow, that was very powerful. And I love the picture of this, the sparrow in the hand. Well, once again, guys, I am glad we had an open mic and glad that y'all were willing to share your work. Thank you so very much. Joey, just amazing to have been here in your company and to celebrate it with you. And we said 710. I said, I won't hold you past 710. Look at yeah. us. We're even a minute early. <laughs> that never trying, happened to me. Trying to catch up with all these beautiful readings. I was trying to send a note in the chat, Don, to that beautifulness. But man, I can't, I can't believe the the warmth of the space. I feel so lucky. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and, you know, I just love how uh, everybody's work today had so many like layers to it and so much depth and, and uh, deeply appreciate the level y'all are working at. <laughs> That's, I do. These and the picture incredible. behind you, Don, awesome. Is that one you took or is that like a screen, like one of those green screens? No, I stole it from somewhere. I don't know where. I, mean, I like to say borrowed. <laughs> it's just spreading it wider. All right, guys, be well. See you next week. And I'll say same time, but that means seven. <laughs>
Bye, guys. Okay. Thanks for awesome. Thank, Thank you, Zoe. You. Thank you.